Hey everybody, Simon from Lake Hub. Today we're talking about how to pick the perfect pocket knife for fishing. We're gonna talk about five features you've gotta have on your pocket knife if you're gonna go fishing and why. Now I'm not, not gonna be talking about fillet knives, I'm not gonna be talking about multi-tools or nail clippers. Those are all great, handy, but what I'm talking about is just pocket knives. Uh, the reason why is because you're gonna run into situations when you're out fishing where you need to cut some line off, Let's say you got snagged, you might have braided line and you can't just break it off. Um, there are other situations like, you know, you're going to get tangled up. You're going to catch something that, uh, that you can't haul in and, or just, just retying lures and jigs, right? So, uh, pocket knife is going to come in handy. It's something I carry everywhere every day anyway, but especially for fishing. And, uh, I carry specific knives when I fish. Uh, so of the five features that you've got to have on a pocket knife for fishing, number one is uh, the ability to open and close with one hand. And for that reason, I recommend a liner lock knife. And here's what a liner lock is. You can see that when you open the knife all the way, it's spring loaded to lock the knife into place. And the way that you open that back up is by pushing it out of, way, out of the way with your finger. Now, the reason why that's important is for one hand, you can open the knife, push it out of the way, let it start to fall, close it. You can safely, quickly, easily open and close a knife with one hand. Uh, now, that's, that's opposite of a lockback knife. Now, a lockback knife, as the name suggests, locks on the back of the knife. You can see this mechanism right here and right here. When it falls into place, this is a stronger, sturdier locking mechanism, but you need two hands to, to close it. You need one hand to open it, two hands to close it. For that reason, my opinion, lockbacks are out when it comes to fishing. You need to be able to uh, open and close with one hand. Your, your opposite hand is almost always occupied. Feature number two, also having to do with being able to open and close with one hand is either thumb studs or a finger flipper. Okay. Now with thumb studs and a finger flipper, you'll be able to open and close with one hand. Uh, if you're left-handed, you want to look for dual thumb studs. So this one has thumb studs on both sides, which is good for right and left-handed opening. So you can open with one hand, pushing with your thumb, close. Same here. Open with one hand, close with one hand. Now this one, uh, I should note, is a spring-assisted knife. So obviously you can see when you just flip it and it jumps open like that, that um, there's more mechanics going on inside this knife, uh, which is handy, but it's also more difficult to clean and maintain in the long run. All right, feature number three. You have to have a pocket clip. Uh, that may sound kind of silly to say because most pocket knives these days come with pocket clips, but not all of them do. Um, and there are some, some features to note about pocket clips. Um, number one is the depth that it sits in your pocket. Uh, so this is a, what I would call a standard pocket clip. You can see the top of the clip right here is below the top of the knife. As opposed to this one, which is a deep carry pocket clip. Okay, so you can see the top of the clip is almost at the top of the knife. And so this, this knife sits deeper in your pocket or deeper in your waistband. To me, that's a lot more comfortable. It's out of the way, it's not poking into you, and it's not gonna catch on anything while you're walking around. All right, feature number three is a drop point blade profile. Now what I mean is this right here. So this, a good curve on the top and a good curve on the bottom is gonna be, uh, one, it's gonna be comfortable for uh, when it's folded up and put away and it's in your pockets, in your waistband. Um, and number two, this curve right here is gonna be really handy to use in a pinch. Uh, here are some other examples of drop points that are different, different styles and shapes. You can see this one is less curve on the blade, but more on top. 
And finally, the final feature that I look for in, um, in a good pocket knife for fishing is gonna be a plain edge. What I mean by that is on the bottom there are no serrations. It's a plain straight edge as opposed to a fully serrated or in this case, semi serrated edge. You're really just not gonna use the serrations when you're fishing. Uh, so as far as actual uh, make and models that, that I would rec recommend, um, a couple, a couple of options. One is uh, the Kershaw Shuffle. Now, uh, this is the sure, this is the Kershaw Shuffle right here, and this is the Kershaw Shuffle Two. Uh, this is actually in a Tonto point, so you can get this in a drop point. Um, they offer lots of different colors and materials. So the Shuffle and the Shuffle Two, you're going to be twenty bucks or less. And it's a great, uh, affordable, uh, practical fishing knife. Um, if you want to go a little more high end, um, there's a couple more Kershaw models to look at. This is a Scallion. And then this is a Kershaw Leak. And these are going to be more in the $40 to $60 range, but also great knives that check all the boxes for a great fishing knife. So that's it. That's how you pick the perfect pocket knife for fishing. Like and subscribe for more of these types of helpful videos for getting out on the lake, having fun. Uh, so get outside and go to lakehub.com for more information on specific lakes in Texas and beyond.